Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is again from the New York City LAN, Starcon LAN. Upper right hand corner we have Striker starting as the blue Zerg. Bottom right hand corner we have Kaido as the bright pink Zerg. This is going to be on Vermeer, so it is a four player map. In game two, a barn burner between Striker and Kaido. Kaido looked like it, it was a very similar situation to game one. Striker instead able to defend and get the evolution chamber constructed in time. He's Overlord making its way to the bottom right hand corner, so he is going to have an advantageous scout here. Kaido in the meantime making his Overlord pattern to the bottom left, so he's going to be able to scout darkness. This, I don't want to toss it out and say like, oh that's game ending ZVZ. It's a huge advantage. But keep in mind once Mutalisks are in play, this Overlord being in the bottom left can sometimes be one of those buffer factors where it ends up out of harm's way, and that can also end up being a factor down the line if it ends up being Mutalisk versus Mutalisk. Being that it's a four player map, I would not be shocked to see one player or another decide to go for an interior base, or a, uh, sorry, a 12 hatchery. Looks like we're seeing a quick extractor from Kaido. I've seen this a few times before. This is to, and we'll see if Striker recognizes it. So going at gas before pool. Kind of a niche build, but what it allows is an extremely rapid tech to layer. And it can oftentimes, if opponent is unwary, catch them off guard. It looks like we're seeing, looks like a nine pool Maybe an overpool opposite side. Yeah, there's the overlord making its way. Extractor dropping as well. So Striker going to have to be wary. He's up, actually, even on workers right this second. Gonna have to be very, very careful. Striker going for the same build once again. Wondering if I've miscalled that build three times in a row. Hopefully not. I'm always a little bit like, I wasn't watching. What was it? Because <laughs> my brain never wants to do the recovery. But Kaido is gonna have a super fast lair. As soon as the spawning pool finishes, immediate tech to lair with a, a pair of Zerglings to follow. And it's unfortunate because Striker is going to be able to meander up with this Overlord and see this lair morphing. And that should be a big indicator to him that he's going to have to go the evolution chamber path. Meantime, six Zerglings being constructed. Striker actually opting for Zergling speed before uh, lair here, so might want to go with a Zergling Pressure follow-up, despite the fact he's got a lot of hatcheries uh, to defend. But Striker just on the edge, does he recognize it now, is the next question. The much more rapid than standard. Looks like he is gonna go ahead and go Lair himself. Some Zerglings just hanging out the natural expansion. I think Kaido might have caught him off guard. In base, second hatchery for Kaido to be sure to have additional larva to work with and not be down in that aspect. Striker, as the game progresses, will have access to that second gas a little bit earlier, potentially, if it gets to that stage. That's a big if. Spire dropping at 323. Striker moving out with the Zerglings. Is going to have the advantage of Zergling speed. We'll see if he can breach. I don't think he's got a superior Zergling count. Well, maybe he does just by two. But he's going to have to fight uphill. So 10 versus 8. And a close spawning point. Two additional Zerglings are going to be able to cover the gap. Layer just now. So here's the timing. Spire is just about at the halfway point. Not quite. And the layer just finishing now for Striker. So is going to need to follow this up. Potentially with an evolution chamber. And I'm looking to see whether this drone in particular is the one. Nope, going to the mineral pile. So Kaido going to have the air lead right now, and this is turning into a similar situation to the previous matches here, where Striker has the worker lead and is in the defensive slot. But let's see if... Let's see how he plays it from here. So I have to assume he's going to drop that Evo. Because sees the Spire finishing right this second. That's going to be five Mulisks in the air immediately. He's going to He sees all of those eggs morphing and aspires only at the halfway mark. Okay, now we got it. Never know the timing of when to drop. Creep Colony's there in plenty of time. 
And also with this forward blockade, Kaido's not going to have the opportunity to go breach. And unfortunately for Kaido, I think this might have played off if this Overlord did not wander into his into his base. But Striker getting that Overlord scout first. Kaido going to make his way out regardless. The lower Spore Colony in the main, potentially not morphing in time. It looks like the rest of them going to be in time. And yeah, I think Kaido recognizing it. So instead, just getting the Overlord kill. And going to press down, grab his natural expansion, try to play economic catch-up from here. Spire is finished, keep in mind. Worker count actually even, but now... Striker does have that second extractor to come on line to potentially get more gas over the long haul. Kaido, if he can peck away at this... Yeah, still is able to get drone kills there at the natural deny. The more important denial, though, will be denying that... The drone gas... Mule is starting to take the field from Strikers. Needing a little bit of free damage as the Mutalist count starts to grow. The ability to deny that natural expansion is going to diminish. And so now it is up to... So Kaido currently with the worker lead, but it's up to him to do some sort of aggression to make up the difference in gas over the short haul. It looks like the Overlord somewhat exposed. The Mutalist not there to defend. It looks like they are trying to draw back. So eating a little bit of fire. And right now though, Kaido in a, as, as much as I'm saying all this, when I look at it, a quick second, so Striker, he's got to uh, flip the script here. Striker has a big gas lead, but he needs to get the minerals out. Ignore what I said earlier. This base, I'm having an off casting day. Second base up, Striker's actually up 10 supply. He's up a worker, so it's actually up to Striker to utilize that gas somehow to turn around and make something happen. A single Scourge over that edge. Striker does have five Mutalisks. Is down overall, so actually flip everything I said earlier. Because I'm just not paying enough attention. Kaido, I believe, has a superior ground army and air army and economy right this second. He's up one worker. He's got seven Mutalisks compared to the five. But Striker still has that 400, 500 gas lead in the bank. His problem, though, is he doesn't have enough drones to... Okay, finally has some two additional drones. Let's see if he ever gets an opportunity to utilize it. So this is kind of like the ticking time bomb here. I still think this is the ticking time bomb on the opposite end is when does Striker get enough minerals to be able to preemptively utilize that gas? Also, that plus one armor going to come down a little bit earlier for Striker, and if he finds the right opportunity, might be able to even things up at that stage. Still 10 Mutalisks versus 7. There's also, three. keep in mind, three hatcheries down here for Kaido, so he's got more larva to work with. Currently still... Sitting at a 7 supply lead. Zerglings just checking to make sure that third wasn't grabbed. I think Striker might want to move out. Some Zerglings dancing in between. Actually, that one Zergling might have been able to make its way across. I'm not sure if Striker recognizes that he's got the faster plus one armor or not. And I'm wondering if he's going to try to move for an engagement. He's dropping his own third hatchery. In a defensive slot, a slot. Striker does have the defensive advantage because he's got these spore colonies down. Kaido grabbing a third, however. And actually, his thing's macro fourth. Looks like Striker has been able to utilize that gas and even up at least the air fleet. Is down three workers otherwise. Zergling speed finally coming online for Kaido. And Kaido moving out, honestly, at the precise wrong moment. Because, uh... Right now, it's going to be about 15, 20 seconds before he's got comparative gas. Scourge moving up just to see what's going on at the main. Kaido is able to secure this third base and that third gas potentially. And he's still got a significant lead. I think that's mostly in Zerglings on the ground, but critically that three worker lead overall. Striker hasn't immediately followed this up with a follow-up of plus two armor and in, has instead started building a large amount of 
mules to follow. And this is kind of the scary part, I think, for Kaido, is even with being down a few uh, Mulusks here and there, Striker's Muta Micro is phenomenal, and his Focus Fire, also phenomenal. So it might be kind of scary moving forward. Zergling gets the first hit. Third Gas, however, coming online for Kaido. Striker's closed the gap to three supply, which looks like it is mostly in three drones, but Striker moving out with that massive air fleet into enemy territory. Finds the open third. Kaido pressing in. Striker splitting his army up, and it gets absolutely flattened. Striker moving in with some additional Scourge, able to land some of those hits, and might have recovered it with the Scourge landing. But he's at, at a closer reinforcement point, so Kaido, able to wipe out what's left, has a healthy leftover Mutalisk count, and has once again maintained and opened up the lead. Two Mutalisks pressing down with some health to try to at least stay alive in this match. And now Kaido with a commanding air lead, plus he's going to have this third up. The Zergling at least able to take out a few drones in between, but Kaido has opened this game up near double the supply. So it looks like Kaido in a position to knock Striker into the lower bracket. Few Zerglings sneaking through. Able to critically kill some of these gas drones. Zerglings flooding the 12 o'clock. That's there are mulesks there to greet them. But will they be able to still push in underneath? It looks like no, they're gonna pull back. But with the mulesks out of position. Oh, Kaido drawing back. Maybe because of the Zerglings attacking at that third. Striker doing a great job of keeping Kaido distracted. Both armies flooding. The drones completely pulling out. That's a 10 drone lead. 11 drone lead for Kaido, which is insane. But despite being down a massive amount of supply and economy, Stryker's done a fantastic job of keeping Kaido off his back. It's kind of desperation measures, though, at this stage. Still trying to get that 12 o'clock base up. That's coming up so much later. Zergling armies flooding to both locations. A couple of them bleeding off. Some Zerglings engaging Zerglings at the third. They're going to get cleaned up fairly easily. A single Mutalisk getting picked off on that corner. I think Kaido running at, if I, I wish I could do kind of like a, this is where having StarCraft 2-ish sort of thing would be a little bit more helpful because it's hard to tell how many Mutalisks Kaido has up over Striker here as far as just pure control groups. Point being, it's Kaido's game to lose right this second. Flood of Zerglings making their way up. The Mutalisks trying to hunt that army found the Mutalisks to the top left. The 12 o'clock base completely exposed. The Mutalisks looking, this could be a forced engagement and the game right here. As the Zerglings enter the 12 o'clock location, the Mutalisks are potentially forced to engage. There's a stream of Zerglings moving to engage otherwise. And yeah, Kaido going to try to push that engagement. Striker just going to abandon that 12 o'clock and hope he gets enough damage done otherwise. The Zerglings breaching, but there are Mutalisks to greet them there at the natural expansion. The Zerglings clearing up. The Mutalisks actually have backed off. The hatchery left very, very weak. The Mutalisks trying to draw back, and all of a sudden, Striker able to get into the natural expansion, and it looks like some Zerglings able to get to the main. And at least kill a few drones here and there. Create a little bit of havoc, but not a lot else. Kaido still up 10 supply. Up a significant... He's still got the superior air fleet. Striker's done a good job to preserve the Mutalisks he does have, starting to build at that 12 o'clock location. And Kaido on the move once again. Can he finally close it out? Plus two armor has completed. That's going to make those Mutalisks hit all the harder as well. Only plus one armor opposite side from Striker. Zerglings finding that Mutalisk fleet. Some Zerglings trying to sneak underneath. It looks like Kaido mostly going to ignore it and wants to try to again force a fight at that 12 o'clock. Striker once again going to just abandon it. But pull out. Again, Striker going, doing the same tactics, trying to draw the units off. The Zerglings, however, able to finish off what was left at the 12 o'clock. The Zerglings flooding into the bottom right. Zerglings and Mutalisks there to engage. And Kaido able to defend, and that should be game right there. The Zerglings moving from the 12 o'clock. Might want to... It looks like they're going to move back to the 12 o'clock just to, to make sure the larvae are cleaned up there. Kaido has a huge air army right now. And Striker moving in 
catching a bunch of overlords exposed. Doing a lot of things to try to stay in it. Now going to try to engage a lot of scourge hits in between, but I just don't think it's going to be sufficient. Striker's Mutalisk army getting obliterated and Kaido with it looks like two control groups of Mutalisks remaining. So Kaido prevails and moves, continues to move up the winner's bracket. Striker drops to the loser's bracket. Great match between these two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.